or the pseudo-democracies that we are evolving into wars are a result of lies the Vietnam War and the push for US involvement was a result of the Gulf of Tonkin incident a lie here, here. the Iraq War famously is a result of lies wars in Somalia are a result of lies the Second World War and the German invasion of Poland was a result of carefully constructed lies that is war by media let us ask ourselves of the complicit media which is the majority of the mainstream press what is the average death count attributed to each journalist when we understand that wars come about as a result of lies peddled to the British public and the American public and the publics all over Europe and other countries then who are the war criminals? It is not just leaders, it is not just soldiers, it is journalists. Journalists are war criminals. And why one might think that that should lead us to a state of despair that the reality that is constructed around us is constructed by liars, is constructed by people who are close to those that they are meant to be policing. It should lead us also to an optimistic understanding because if wars can be started by lies, truth can be started, peace can be started by truth. se encuentra a más de 15.000 kilómetros de distancia de su casa, Australia. Encerrado en un territorio, el de Ecuador, dentro de otro territorio, el Reino Unido. En un hogar que se ha convertido en su prisión. En este rincón de Londres, en la embajada de Ecuador, se esconde el enemigo número uno de Estados Unidos, Julian Assange. Dicen que la curiosidad es el aspecto emocional que engendra la exploración, la investigación y el aprendizaje. Pero todo se complica cuando los interrogantes se trasladan al futuro. Ahora se están abriendo nuevos horizontes y se anuncian cambios enormes. Todos somos conscientes de que estamos diciendo adiós a un mundo y que otro se está fraguando a gran velocidad. Si pudiéramos desplazar un enviado especial a ese futuro, ¿con qué nos encontraríamos? Por eso, con mi penúltima energía profesional, me propongo viajar a esa frontera para conocer y escuchar a quienes están diseñando el nuevo tiempo. Voy a dejar al descubierto mi bendita curiosidad para intentar desentrañar esa gran incógnita. ¿Cómo será el mundo cuando ya no esté? Like for you to visit Julian in Belmarsh Prison. I was quite affected by it. I mean, this is uh, this is one of the UK's most notorious jails. It's a high security prison. Uh, where they put the worst of the worst. Murderers, uh, terrorists, uh, the worst of the worst. And uh, I was quite alarmed by the conditions in which Julian Assange is being uh, imprisoned. I was quite alarmed by the effect on his health. When you boil all this down, 
This is about an Australian journalist publicising hard evidence of US war crimes, of the US being deeply embarrassed and wanting to get even, and the Australian government happy to go along for the ride because they believe that our relationship with Washington is more important than the welfare of Australian citizens and the fundamental right of Australian citizens to justice. How much power do you think Scott Morrison has in convincing the President of the United States to let this go? We will not know how much power Scott Morrison has in this until he tries. And so far he hasn't tried. Now this is a real test of the leadership of Scott Morrison. This is a real test of whether or not he believes an Australian citizen, an Australian journalist, uh, is owed justice. Um, Scott Morrison needs to pick up the phone to Joe Biden and say, this madness must end. Please drop the extradition. Please allow Julian Assange to return here. Mind you, it's also a test of the alternative Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese. Uh, it's not good enough for uh, Mr Albanese to be making uh, comments inside the uh, Labor Party room. He also needs to get in front of a camera and tell the Australian people what he would do if elected Prime Minister. Uh, if Anthony Albanese is elected Prime Minister, uh, you know, we need to have a commitment from him beforehand that he will pick up the phone to Joe Biden. I mean, you know, we make much of the fact that we have a, a very close bilateral relationship with the United States. Uh, well, it's about time we, lean, we leaned on that and capitalised on it. It's, it's time for Scott Morrison to pick up the phone and to end this madness. And I think our relationship with the US right now is so warm that that phone call would be successful. Has Scott Morrison engaged with you at all on why he won't pick up the phone? No, I mean, I, I, I've obviously exchanged correspondence with the Prime Minister about this, but they keep batting it away. There's only one thing that matters to this Australian government, and for that matter, its predecessors. Um, as far back as the previous Labor government, there was no sympathy for Julian Assange. A succession of governments, LNP and Labor, are all putting out relationship with Washington ahead of the fundamental rights of Australian citizens and the importance of them enjoying justice. Um, it's really chilling for all Australians who are left wondering, if they get in strife, will the Australian government stand up for them. Even if we are guilty of something, we are all entitled to justice. And no country in the world, including the US, has global jurisdiction to come after whoever they want, for whatever reason they want, and for their, for their, um, their country of origin to just roll over and get their tummy tickled. What is your view of Julian Assange trying to carve out a normal life in such unnormal circumstances. He now has two young sons, he's now just got married. It's a very bittersweet moment, isn't it? I'm very happy for Julian that he's now married to Stella. Uh, and I think we can all celebrate that little bit of good news in an otherwise dreadful story. Um, I don't know if Julian will ever enjoy a normal life again but surely the the first steps to that is for the extradition to be dropped and for Julian to be allowed to return to Australia and to rebuild his life and in the interim for the British government just let him out of Belmarsh just let him go somewhere in London put an ankle bracelet on him or something but just let him be with his kids and his wife Stella I mean surely the man has suffered enough
have played a major role in over overthrowing, uh, what, what's his name? Uh, what's his name was Salvador Allende. Yeah, fine. Okay. He was democratically elected. Right, okay. Is that okay to overthrow a democratically elected government? Yeah, Is it okay? It depends on what your national security interests are. Are you denying that Pinochet caused huge suffering? I in that don't, I, I, huge, I don't buy it. That, that he committed crimes, I agree. But okay? it's worth it. Huh? Is that what you're saying? Yes, Those crimes are yeah, worth it. Yeah, they, sometimes, unfortunately, uh, things have to be changed in a rather uh, ugly way. The, all these things, this truth thing and all that, they're, they're nothing but propaganda mills. Do you, do you really think yeah, they're... I mean, no, so. You, you are, have, are, they all, are they all conning us, lying us, yeah, Amnesty yeah, International? Yeah, Amnesty International is right in the middle. It's I've seen their names yeah. in the cemetery in Santiago. Yeah, I you're have saying, yeah, you're saying they're thousands, fakes. They have thousands. What right have you, when I mean you, the CIA, the United States government, or any foreign power, what right do you have to do what you do in other countries. What National right? security interest. But that's a divine right, isn't it? Because the people that you do it to have no say. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's just tough. Eleven years. For how long can this go on? Today is International Human Rights Day. What a shame, how cynical. To have this decision on this day, to have one of the foremost, the foremost publisher, journalist of the past 50 years in a UK prison, accused of publishing the truth about war crimes about CIA kill teams. And in fact, every time we have a hearing, more we know more about the abusive nature, the criminal nature of this case. Julian exposed the crimes of CIA torturers, of CIA killers, and now we know that those CIA killers were planning to kill him too. How can this court, how can these courts approve an extradition request under these conditions? Eleven years. For how long can this go on? Today is International Human Rights Day. What a shame. How cynical. To have this decision on this day, to have one of the foremost, the foremost publisher, journalist of the past 50 years in a UK prison, accused of publishing the truth about war crimes, about CIA kill teams.